Financial action. What you gonna do? Sharon Horn Austin awesome here. Day 132 of our FEU 365 day challenge. Do one thing every day that improves us. And we are working on our SOAP framework. We've gone through our story, our financial story, our current versus our desired. We've considered options. Yesterday we brainstormed options and using the Power Vision movie technique. I would love to hear what you think and how that went for you. If it's the first time you've ever done it, it feels a little clunky sometimes, just like when we start meditating or when we start doing hypnosis or we start any new practice. Remember back when you started to walk or ride a bike? Probably not. It was a long time ago. But if you do, or learning to swim, it's, it's a challenge at first. We don't just pop in the water and boom, we're swimming. We have to learn how to do it and once we learn how to do it we can we can practice and we can do it over and over again and master it but until we do it can feel uncomfortable i felt the same way about the power vision movie visualization strategy and thinking about what do i really really want and putting myself in that picture sometimes we feel guilty putting ourselves in that picture like for some reason we don't deserve to have absolutely everything we want and i'm here to tell you that is bs that's absolute nonsense uh so today day 132 we are talking about financial action. The A in our SOAP framework, of course, stands for action. It also stands for, to me, analysis of the alternatives, right? Because if we don't compare alternatives and analyze alternatives, if we just think of something and do it, think of something and do it, we might be spinning our wheels and wasting a lot of time and energy doing things that aren't really going to get us the results we want as easily as they could. So what do we do before we even begin deciding what action we're going to take we need to have a decision making tool and we have talked about <clears throat> the urine analysis i know lovely name and how we can use that to analyze alternatives we've talked about i'm gonna grab a magnifying glass because i think we've talked about all of my favorites so far with the exception of one uh we talked about with respect to our physical well-being the urine analysis with respect to our emotional well-being we used uh I, oh, we used a mood journal and we used and we, we remembered how we wanted to pick uh, the action we wanted to do based on how we felt about it, right? Uh, then for mental, we use our head, heart, and intuition tool. For spiritual, we use nominal group technique, which is, again, if my eight-year-old daughter could learn how to do it and use it to name her puppy, we can use it to do absolutely anything, especially improve our life. So today... I'm going to share my absolute favorite, longest running decision-making tool for analyzing alternatives. I've used it for everything from deciding if I was going to marry my now ex-husband, which apparently I didn't do a great job on it, or a long-term job on it, uh, to what am I going to eat for dinner, or should I eat those caramels or not, or that turtle caramel cheesecake. So what I like to do is, and this is, a, a, my dad taught my sisters and I this when we were very little girls. And that's how powerful a tool it is. If, if you're still doing something that you learned as a little girl and you know it has a positive impact on you, why would you ever stop doing it? So my brain automatically runs things through when I have to choose or make a decision or choose among alternatives through the plus and minus strategy. And you can either do it on paper or you can do it in your mind, in your head, right? Just quickly run through it. So <clears throat> today our tool is plus or minus. And I like to, when I'm doing it for something important or something big, I actually grab a piece of paper and write it down. That's how my ex-husband found uh, the one I did on him before I decided if I was going to marry him or not, which is really hilarious. He was, he was a little offended. And I'm like, hey, it's a tool my dad taught me. It works for me. You might want to try it sometime. So... <clears throat> We think of our different alternatives and for each one we say well what are the what are the negatives what are the drawbacks why would i not want to do this what could possibly go wrong those are all the negatives you list those out and then well what are all the positives of doing this particular thing so i've taken my three options from yesterday stuck them in my notebook for this particular challenge and they're uh i need my magnifying glass to see what i even put <clears throat> let's just pick one and run through it for example um, oh, here's one offer to set up a challenge for someone for their business. So what are the, the positives of doing that? Well, they get the proven pro for them and for me, right? For me, it's quick, easy. I've done it hundreds of times, if not thousands of times before. Uh, 
They get the best and all the knowledge and wisdom I've done from all of the challenges I've done. They get it done for them, which is super easy. Uh, and I could do it without having to think about it very much. Just get to know their business, then apply it to their business, come up with a challenge idea that works for them, that they like, that gets them the results that they want. So from a positive standpoint, quick, easy to do. I've got a lot of experience doing it. Negative, it would take my time and energy devoting and learning about a, a client's business and figuring out what would work best for them and then actually creating it and probably having to deliver it, if not do the scripts and help deliver it, which just takes time and energy, right? So is there a negative to that? Hmm, I don't know, not, not super negative. And I will do that plus and minus for each of the alternatives that I picked, each of the three that I picked out of my, I think I only did a list of 12. I only did 12 yesterday. I was a little lazy, a little busy, a little preoccupied, and we had big storms. So that was my excuse for not doing more. Actually, I just got busy with other projects and other people and other things, and I didn't uh, remember to like brainstorm 20 plus. But I, the assignment was 10, right? So it doesn't matter. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to run through our action item today is to use plus and minus to go through our alternatives. You can do all of the ones that you came up with, or you can, some of them you can just do in your head, right? Like if I look at my list and it says, um, sell a course, well, what are the pluses and minuses of, of selling a course? Well, I would create a new course. Do I have courses I could sell? Yes. I could take some of my existing courses and just remarket them, which would probably be a plus quick, easy to do, et cetera. But to, to create a new course and sell a course, uh, time energy it takes a, quite a bit of time and energy picking the niche market. What am I going to sell? What's the course going to be on? What do people want? Da, 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 da. Then I have to set up the, the marketing for it, set up the funnel, et cetera. And that, that takes a, a bit of time. Um, so that's kind of a negative, but once it's set up, I can sell it and then I can bring it out of mothballs and sell it again at a future time. If the topic, if the direction is still of interest to people right now in my niche market, or I could turn it and if it's super successful, make it evergreen. I could just have it run like every week or every two weeks or every month, whatever makes sense for the particular course. So plus or minus each of your alternatives or some, at least three of your alternatives, and then share in the comments below the action you're going to take today. Now, I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to pick. I, I haven't gone through the plus or minus for mine yet. So I'm going to go through mine, do the plus or minus, figure out which one makes sense to take action on, and then take the next logical action step today to move me toward creating that option, putting that whole option into play. Now, I want to make $6,000 to $10,000, right? So am I going to put something in place like that, like the flip of a switch to create that? Probably not, right? Some of us are set up so that we can do that. We could just make an offer to our mailing list easily. Um, sorry about that. That was a, a reminder of a meeting I have coming up. So I better hurry up and get prepped for that. All right. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow. Do this. It's fun. But remember, nothing happens with a decision until we take action toward that. So if we want to help to create what we want financially, we have to be willing to take a step toward it. And that's, that's what the SOAP framework's all about. All right, have an awesome day. Bye.